Today I'm going to show you how I got on photographing the stars with the Sony a7 III and the 28-75mm from Tamron. The Tamron 28-75mm f2.8 has been selling like hotcakes, so I thought this would be a good one to do to see how it copes underneath the night sky. Now I don't own this lens, but I borrowed it off my good friend Rai. He's had it for a while and he raves about it. Now I'm very much a prime lens shooter. I have the 25mm Batis, I have a 14mm Samyang, which I hopefully will be upgrading soon. And I like to get really wide field shots with the Milky Way in and a little bit of foreground, which I'll normally light paint. As soon as I mounted the 28 to 75 mm on my camera, I really did feel restricted. The 28 mm isn't that wide and I really struggled in getting a composition. I got one in the end, but it took a while to find. One way to get around this is to shoot a panorama. It does take a bit more time and effort, but if you're willing to do this, you can still get those really wide field shots with this lens. At the location I was testing this lens at, there was a lot of sand and dust in the air. You can see in this image from the 14 mm that as you get closer to the horizon, this thicker atmosphere starts to obscure the stars in the Milky Way. When shooting with the Tamron's narrower field of view at 28 mm, this hampers getting a good composition. I ended up finding this composition with a 28 mm, positioning myself in a dip in the dunes and pointing the camera up towards the tree. This meant that the dunes hid a lot of the dust and atmosphere closer to the horizon. With the widest aperture at f2.8, it really is good for astrophotography. It does let in so much light into your camera. However, when you take into consideration the 500 rule, or well, because my location is closer to the equator, the 400 rule, with the 28 mm, I have to keep my exposure time to 14 seconds or faster. To compare this with the wider lens, my 14 mm Samyang allows me to shoot a maximum exposure of 28.5 seconds, doubling the exposure. So you can see the advantage of having a much wider lens. This, in effect, is doubling the exposure, and that's massive for astrophotography. There's so little light about that you really do need to let in as much light as possible. One thing at night that can be really tricky is to focus your lens correctly, so you get all of the stars perfectly in focus. But I found with the Tamron, it wasn't too hard at all. I found the brightest star in the sky, then used the magnify tool to punch in twice, and then I manually focused the lens until I got that star perfectly in focus. Again, with that wide aperture of f2.8, this enables you to see stars on the display on the back or through the viewfinder. So with the magnify tool, you can really focus in on those stars. I have made a tutorial on focusing with a fly-by-wire lens at night. If you want to learn more about this, click on the eye in the corner or the link in the description. Looking at the images I got with this lens, there doesn't seem to be any coma aberrations towards the edges. Not that I can see anyway, and this is at f2.8. Now to show you what these aberrations look like, this is an image from the Canon 50mm f1.4 at 1.4. If I zoom into the corner, you can see it stretched the stars out into bird-like shapes. They get worse as you go towards the edges of the image, and they fall in a concentric pattern around the center of the image. With my 50mm, this normally happens when I have the aperture wide open. If I stop it down a touch, these tend to go away. So this is really good news for the Tamron, as I can shoot wide open and get good photos of the stars without any of these coma aberrations. Now, if you're heading out and you want to shoot the Milky Way and it's quite low and flat in the sky, it's quite tricky, so you'll probably have to do a panorama. If it's more vertical in the sky, it's a little bit easier, especially when you have a foreground object like I've got in this shot. A good scenario for this lens would be, say if you're in the mountains and a constellation or part of the Milky Way was vertical above this mountain range, you could really get a close up of the mountain and the Milky Way. And these shots work really well. Also for an f2.8 lens, it's relatively small and light and this is great for traveling. The main downside I found with this lens was the widest focal length. I'd have much preferred it to go down to 24 millimeters. However, I know that they must have done this to keep the weight and the size down. And that's about it. 
If you have this lens and you're considering going out and shooting the stars, I'd say go and do it. With the 28 mm widest focal length, you'll have to think about the composition a little bit more, but with a little bit of thought, you'll be able to get some really good compositions and really good shots of the stars. And if you're considering buying this lens, but aren't sure how it will cope at night, I'd say go for it. I was really surprised at how well it coped at night. You will have to learn how to shoot panoramas, but this isn't that hard at all. And with a program like Lightroom, you can stitch them together really easily. As always, if you like what you see, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, give me a thumbs down. And for weekly tutorials, hints and tips in photography and videography, subscribe and turn on notifications. I'll see you in the next one.